CNN's Daniel Dale is CNN's resident fact checker. Uh, he's handy to have around at times like this. Uh, Daniel, we just heard a little speech from uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, what'd you make of it? Did he say anything uh, that was not true? He did. I mean, it was mostly uncheckable, subjective opinion, but he did say a few things that weren't w weren't quite right at very least. So he, he repeated his false conspiracy theory that he's in, boys. He did it. He said it. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to fact checking the supposed fact checkers. People who are blatantly partisan yet gaslight the country to protect their ideology and party. Slimy, dishonest people like Daniel Dale and Jake Tapper. As soon as Biden took over the White House, our media switched gears from running daily tallies of Trump's supposed lies, which they constantly talked about every single day, to not doing that at all to their Democrat president. Now watch this latest example of Democrat state propagandists enforcing their opinions as fact. CNN's Daniel Dale is CNN's resident fact checker. Uh, he's handy to have around at times like this. Uh, Daniel, we just heard a little speech from uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, what'd you make of it? Did he say anything uh, that was not true? He did. I mean, it was mostly uncheckable, subjective opinion, but he did say a few things that weren't w weren't quite right at very least. So he, he repeated his false conspiracy theory that essentially that Joe Biden is behind this case, which was brought by a locally elected district attorney. I object, Your Honor, and I move to strike! Wait, 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 we have to stop because believe it or not, Daniel Dale is being dishonest. It's become so tiresome that these state media mouthpieces have become addicted to throwing out that term false conspiracy theories like a grenade so that their viewers immediately dismiss whatever claims are being made by their opponents. He's showing his bias and being extremely misleading. He's leaving out the little detail that this locally elected DA is a Democrat whose campaign was backed and supported by the notorious far-left extremist financer George Soros. Essentially that Joe Biden is behind this case, which was brought by a locally elected district attorney. He said uh, Biden is behind it. He has his top people working with the DA's office to make sure everything goes right. There is no basis for that. That appears to be a reference to a former Justice Department official who went to work for the DA's office, but there's no sign that that was anything but his own employment decision. In fact, this former official, Matthew Colangelo, uh, had previously been a colleague of DA Bragg, so he rejoined uh, his old colleague. He's saying there's absolutely no evidence at all of any coordination between Joe Biden Biden and Alvin Bragg, despite a former Biden Justice Department official joining Bragg's team. Instead, he pretends like this means nothing. If this were a Trump Justice Department official arriving on a Biden prosecution, the Democrats and their media would lose their minds. On a side note, in a separate case, we know that Biden staffers did meet with Jack Smith a couple weeks before he brought his J6 nonsense charges. And in the ridiculous fraud cases, Fannie's lover and highly paid prosecutor met with Biden just before those charges were announced. Also, the Democrat Manhattan judge that's overseeing Trump's case, who donated to Joe Biden and another anti-Trump cause in 2020, and whose daughter has earned almost $100 million from her father's trial of Trump. That's exactly why he put a gag order on Donald Trump, so he couldn't talk about these things. There's also the issue of Biden hinting on multiple occasions that they've always had a plan to keep Trump from getting in the White House again. We just have to demonstrate that he will not take power. Um, by uh, if we uh, if he does run, uh, making sure he uh, under legitimate efforts of uh, our constitution does not become the next president again. Under my predecessor, who's busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, just today, Democrat Rep. J. Powell admitted that Democrats wouldn't have put President Trump on trial had the Senate actually gone through with the impeachment and then barred him from running again. And, you know, I go back to the responsibility of Congress here mm -hmm. um, because had the Senate actually gone through with the impeachment of Donald Trump, Hello. we would not be in this situation. If only they would have left some sort of clue. Daniel Dale mentions none of this, so he can continue on his false conspiracy theory narrative. Uh, he also claimed that Joe Biden is a crooked president, should be on trial. I think that's mostly opinion, but I think it's worth noting, Jake, that we've had this extended Republican House investigation, impeachment inquiry, no evidence of impeachable offenses, high crimes and misdemeanors, let alone criminal offenses. And then I should note, as, as you did briefly, that you know he, he read this, this big pile of documents, of articles, uh, citing headlines denouncing the case. I, I Googled some of them as he was speaking, so 
So he read one uh, talking about the whopping outrage in Trump's indictment. Well, that's that's harsh criticism. Where was it from? A Fox News column. Uh, he mentioned the Daily Caller, another right-wing publication. I googled another headline from the right-wing National Review. He mentioned. So there are some liberal uh, scholars, legal experts, publications who have uh, raised questions about this case. But that pile he showed uh, was largely uh, his his usual uh, friends, the usual suspects, praising Trump, Trump defending Trump uh, in the conservative media. Okay, and you're his enemies, always attacking Trump and his political opponents. It's literally the only thing CNN does. They're clearly left-wingers and Democrats themselves. So by Daniel Dale's own standards, you should just ignore his analysis as worthless. Oh, that was different. He's just dismissing these admittedly liberal experts for disagreeing with Trump's prosecutions. But there have been others from the left and non-political, like CNN's own Eli Honig, who wrote a piece criticizing the prosecutions as politically motivated and messy. And then you got guys like Stephen Smith, who recently came out for Trump based solely on what he sees as an unfair attempt to rig the election. As much as people may have been abhorred by Donald Trump's statement weeks ago, talking about how black folks, he's hearing that black folks find him relatable because what he's going through is similar to what black Americans have gone through. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. When you see the law, law enforcement, the court system and everything else being exercised against him, it is something that black folks throughout this nation can relate to with some of our historic, iconic figures. We've seen that happen throughout society. So no matter what race, what ethnicity you may emanate from, we relate to you when you're suffering like that because we know we have. And that's what he articulated. As unpopular as it was, as much as we didn't like to hear it, it's the truth and there's no way around it. So yeah, there's more than a little evidence that this is all politically driven. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments and then if you're still here, might as well hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks a lot and make sure to keep checking back for more.